All right, let's look at the female reproductive system, uh, the first part. This is part one. Uh, get your notes out. Hopefully you have your notes. So we're going to look at the female reproductive system. Well, we have the ovaries. They're paired almond-shaped glands containing about 400,000 primordial follicles. Now, you can see there's one there, but here are the two ovaries. See on each side. They are the primary sex organ of the female. The primary sex organ of the female. They're suspended by several ligaments. You can see the broad ligament here. These are um, uh, serous membrane, basically, uh, that are suspending that. Produce haploid ova by oogenesis, just like males produce haploid sperm by oogenesis. That's meiosis. Females produce their eggs by meiosis also, and that process is called oogenesis. Now, just like the male, this would represent the testicle in the male, represents that. They have a similar coverings, but the first one here is a germinal epithelium on the surface. Simple cuboidal epithelium that covers the ovary. All right, that's okay. Right below that, tunica albuginea. That sounds familiar. A capsule of collagenous connective tissue below the germinal epithelium. There's this little white line going all the way around this ovary. You have a blank. It's called stroma. S-T-R-O-M-A. Stroma the outer cortex, and the inner medulla. So it's, it's this whole area here of the ovary. Contains the ovarian follicles. They're the primary follicles, that's what it has. There are 300 to 400,000 of these um, follicles in the female's ovaries, and they're there since she was born. <clears throat> so your eggs are as old as you are. You haven't made any more. They're, if you're 20, your eggs are 20 years old, and they're at the end of meiosis one. They haven't finished meiosis yet. And this process that we're going to be talking about is going to trigger some of these primary follicles to move from the end of meiosis one to start and complete meiosis two to make an egg that can then be ovulated. Now, something called the vesicular follicle. It used to be called graphia, and the new term is vesicular, V-E-S-I-C-U-L-A-R, follicle, and mature ovum and its surrounding tissues. So you see there's your ovum there, and the cells around here are called follicular cells, and the follicular cells are going to be uh, secreting the hormones. And after birth, uh, not after birth, after ovulation, when the egg leaves, the cells that are left behind become something called the corpus luteum. C-O-R-P-U-S, second word, L-U-T-E-U-M, produces progesterone and estrogens. It means a uh, yellow body, that's what that means. So there it is, it does kind of stand out on the surface of the egg. Now, getting back to this profile of the female reproductive tract here, there are some structures called fimbriae, F-I-M-B-R-I-A-E, fimbriae, finger-like structures, and you can see they are somewhat finger-like, and you can see on the left-hand side a little better, which sweep over the surface of the ovaries in search of the ovulated mature ovum. So the egg has been ovulated, and around time of ovulation, these start getting modal, and they start sweeping across the surface of the ovary trying to gather or capture that egg. When they capture it, they're going to channel it up into the opening to this tube here called the uterine tube, and the opening is called the infundibulum. I-N-F-U-N-D-I-B-U-L-U-M. The opening into the fallopian tube, into this tube. Fallopian tube or uterine tube has several names. And so your next blank is fallopian tube, F-A-L-L-O-P-I-A-N tube or uterine tube, either one, approximately four inches long, 
homologous to the ductus deferens of the male. The male's ductus deferens carried his gametes, the sperm, from the testes to the outside. The female's tube here, which is homologous to the ductus deferens, is carrying her gametes toward the uterus. So it's uh, homologous to the ductus deferens of the male, a duct which delivers the ovum collected by the fimbriae over here to the uterus. This tube is lined with ciliated columnar epithelium. So the cilia are going to beat to help move that egg. The cilia beat and carry them toward the uterus. It takes about a three day time frame to get from where they were collected, the egg is collected, to the uterus. The duct is also called the uterine tube or oviduct, just some other terms. You can see the uterus, this uh, pear shaped structure here, also called the womb, pear shaped, the site of implantation and development of a fetus. So the egg is going to deposit itself into the wall and the fetus is going to develop into the inside of this uterine cavity here. There are three basic layers of the uterus. So here's the wall of the uterus. A is the perimetrium, P-E-R-I-M-E-T-R-I-U-M, a serous membrane. It's the visceral uh, peritoneum. Becomes the broad Sorry, ligament. I didn't quite Oops. catch that. Could you please repeat it? No, my phone just went off. I'm not sure I understand. That's the problem with your phones. Um, becomes the broad ligament, this ligament here. Remember I told you that the peritoneum is, is surrounding this organ. It's the visceral peritoneum and it becomes the broad ligament, which you can see is going to help to secure that uterus. The muscle is called the myometrium. Three layers of smooth muscle. It's about 75% of the thickness of this uterus. And then the endometrium, E-N-D-O M-E-T-R-I-U-M, -E the inner nutritive inner lining. Also, um, it's made up of several um, la uh, layers here. And so I have them here. The first blank is stratum functionalis. And we can see it on this picture here. Stratum functionalis, stratum it means layer. S-T-R-A-T-U-M. The second word is functionalis, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N-A-L-I-S, stratum functionalis. This is what's shed during menstruation. It's the functional layer. This is the layer where the egg is going to implant. And you see it has a lot of capillaries there for blood supply, and some glandular secretions can occur there. So it's a very nutritive lining for the egg to land in. Well, underneath it, this layer right here is called the stratum basalis. Uh, basalis is B-A-S-A-L-I-S. -S. It's permanent, so it's going to stay there. And you can see it's right here, stratum basalis. And it produces or, or forms the stratum functionalis every month. The stratum functionalis is what's left off during menstrual flow. If there's no egg implanted here, that lining is gotten rid of, and a new fresh lining is built up every month. And here you can see the, uh, the myometrium, uh, part of the, the uterine wall here. So the endometrium is, has, is made up of two layers of cells, the stratum basalis and the stratum functionalis. Every month, the stratum basalis builds a new stratum functionalis on top of it. So this endometrial lining is the site of menstruation. This sloughs off, the functionalis sloughs off. It's the site of implantation of a zygote. A zygote is a fertilized egg. And development of the fetus during pregnancy. It's going to develop in this uterine lining here. The fundus. Let's talk about some parts of this uterus. The fundus, F-U-N-D-U-S, is the top dome-shaped portion of the uterus. It's called the fundus. The main portion of the uterus is called the body, the main central portion. And the lower end is called the cervix, C-E-R-V-I-X, the lower end of the uterus. Now, 
Inside of the um, uterus, this is the uterine cavity. This is where the fetus is going to develop in the uterine cavity. Well, there's an exit point through that cavity through the cervix. And there's a cervical canal here that goes through the cervix. Well, there are two openings. The opening of the cervical canal to the uterine cavity is called the internal os. And in your notes, it says the internal os is between the uterine cavity and the cervical canal. The external os is where the cervix opens into the vagina. So the two ends of this canal, internal os, external os. Os means opening or mouth. Now, the next blank is vagina, V-A-G-I-N-A. -A. The female copulatory organ, one that the females have sexual intercourse with. A tubular fibromuscular organ, which serves as a passageway for menstrual flow and for copulation. So when the functionality slips off, it leaves the uterine lining and leaves by way of the vagina to the exterior. And for copulation, it's a female uh, sex organ for copulation. It's lined with stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium. Produces an acidic mucus to kill bacteria and to act as a lubricant. So that's a mucus secretion, uh, which is acidic. It also kills bacteria. It's approximately four inches in length. And you can kind of see on here contains rugae. Those are folds or transverse folds in here called rugae. The vaginal orifice is the opening of the vagina to the exterior. So V-A-G-I-N-A-L. Second word is orifice, O-R-I-F-I-C-E. And it's not on this, not labeled on this picture. The external opening to the vagina. The hymen, H-Y-M-E-N. Hymen, H-Y-M-E-N. A membranous sheet of tissue which may form a border around the vaginal orifice. Now, the external female genitalia are called the vulva. So it's the external female genitalia. And you can see several things. The mons pubis, M-O-N-S, second word, P-U-B-I-S, an elevation of adipose tissue which cushions the pubic symphysis during sexual intercourse. All right. Two large folds called labia majora, L-A-B-I-A, -A, second word, M-A-J-O-R-A. -A. It's the large lips, the major lips. Are two longitudinal folds of skin. They're homologous to the scrotum in the male, and they contain adipose, sweat, and oil glands. Just medial are the labia minora, another pair of, of uh, labia, which are smaller, L-A-B-I-A, -A, second word, M-I-N-O-R-A, labia minora, two smaller folds of skin, medial to the labia majora. They contain many oil glands for lubrication during sexual intercourse. Then there's the clitoris, C-L-I-T-O-R-I-S. You can see right there. A small cylindrical mass of erectile tissue. It's covered by a prepus and is homologous to the penis of the male. So when we look at this picture here, we can see the mons pubis there, the labia majora, the labia minora, and the clitoris. Clitoris is homologous to the penis in the male. That's the female erectile tissue. Mammary glands are modified sweat glands, S-W-E-A-T, that produce milk for nourishing offspring. They contain 15 to 20 lobes. These are lobes here, and you can see four here. Uh, see, so points out. Uh, that, well, it points out the lobules. We'll look at lobules. Here's lobe. So here's a lobe. This one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, the lobes contain milk-secreting cells called alveoli. A L V E O L I. So let's look at the lobes again on this picture. Here are one, two, three lobes. So you can see a lobule. See these little compartments here? Little 
structures that make up this entire lobe here. Lobules are little lobes that make up the large lobule. The alveoli, the milk cells, drain into a series of ducts, and you can see them here. Lactiferous sinus, lactiferous duct, opening of lactiferous duct, which open onto the surface of the nipple, N-I-P-P-L-E. The pigmented projection located, that's the part that sticks up, is the nipple, located in the middle of a circular pigmented area called the areola. So the pigmented disc on the surface of the breast is called the areola, and the structure that projects off the middle, or up from the middle of the areola, is called the nipple. And that's going to end the first part of our notes for female reproduction.